Hello. This video is going to be a little bit educational. One person, who implied to be affiliated with Volunteers and Development of Young Deer Simulator, left an interesting comment. It reveals some aspects of development as well as what kind of people Alex is working with. Take your time to read it. Some things in the comment just don't come together, and some simply don't make sense. Numbers 3 and 4 got my attention, so I have taken a closer look at the files and models to verify. I'll begin with the quality of models. As I have mentioned in my first video, half of the files were in OBJ format, apparently, those particular files aren't genuine leaks, but extracted copies from the game or its Unity project. The software used to extract copies can only save them in OBJ. The reason why this format is not used in development is how little information it can contain. OBJ supports just one UV channel and can't contain animation. You can see all the differences in the provided table. With this knowledge in mind, I have brushed off in original files and re-examined Osoro's assets, since all of them are in FBX format. As usual, I'll start with the hair. It doesn't have issues with UV, but it suffers a whole lot of detached polygons along the unwrapping seams. To unwrap face or hair you would need a couple seams. It's some sort of a cut which tells where to tear polygons apart. The software would peel polygons like a skin of an orange and then project them in two-dimensional coordinates. This procedure is not supposed to detach polygons, and yet here we are. It may have something to do with smoothing groups, the modeler may have checked something unnecessary, or, in the worst case, the modeler may have detached polygons to not draw seams. The coat is all right as a model, but as a piece of clothing though, not so much. Now bandages, as I have noted in the previous video, they come in different files each and they all have a skeleton. Why not save them into a single file like any other outfit? FBX files are still messy and don't make much sense. Leaked assets are not organized enough nor are they made with the same workflow. During export I was shown different sources of the models. I have also noticed some links to BMP images. Why would anyone use this outdated format? I still wonder if assets had all that clutter intentionally, or the modeler didn't take time to clean them up. Now let's move on to UV unwrapping. The reason not to edit UV to give more space for hair doesn't make any sense at all. Why must hair share same texture file with the face? This doesn't win much performance, given how small file size for textures is. Having separate texture file for hair and face would allow a lot more details. I'm going to demonstrate how much hard work and effort it requires to change UV and bake old texture into new coordinates. Let's begin. First, I'll merge head and hair meshes, since they use the same texture and their UV do not overlap. Now I'm going to copy UV coordinates into the new channel to edit them from there.
Using Bake to Texture tool, I'm going to create texture matching new UV coordinates. I haven't achieved any improvement in the quality, but this gives an opportunity to add more detail to the hair. This was a whole lot of work for one person to do, I need a vacation.